we have already solved question 1 of the 9701 chemistry question paper 52 of the examination series feb march 2025 question 1 is already solved and in this video we will be solving question 2 so let's go ahead and here is question 2 it says ester x has the formula of ch3coor now r is an alkyl group with the general formula cn h2n plus 1 and the ester x undergoes alkaline hydrolysis in aqueous potassium hydroxide the resulting mixture is acidified with dilute hydrochloric acid hcl the organic products of the hydrolysis after acidification are ethanoic acid and an alcohol roh once the identity uh, of roh is found the structure of the ester x can then be determined so here the student uses the following steps and all these steps are given here you can just pause the video and read the whole uh, process all the steps now question a sub question a1 is complete the diagram in figure 2.1 to show the apparatus used for a reflux in step 4 label the diagram now what's the step 4 is the reaction mixture is set up for a reflux and heated for 30 minutes and we can see that they have taken a round bottom flask and it is heated with reflux now what is reflux the round bottom flask is given here the uh, reflux is where a condenser is set upright straight uh, where it is also connected with the water so here we are drawing an upright condenser my drawing might you might find a little weird but it's a digital one so you can use a sp uh, pencil and scale and draw it proper so let me finish there should be a internal tube here which allows oh this is not fine i think we'll have to do with this but remember we can draw it with scale make it a little fine but here we have to label it where we can write water in here so water in has to be from the inlet pipe which is at the bottom and the water out has to be from the top so here we label it and we can also label this as condenser and yes we can see that the heat is already given here so we don't need to label it here the round bottom flask is already there but we don't need to label but then i've just written it so this is how we draw a label diagram now suggest the type of substance added to promote the smooth boiling in step 3 now step 3 shows that the substance is added to promote the smooth boiling now what can be added to smooth boiling means there should not be any a uh, bumping or the uh, liquid inside or the solution inside should not spill out due to bumping so we call those as anti bumping granules anti bumping granules now these are generally made of small glass beads which can be added to the mixture in the reaction uh, in the flask right so here the sub question b is as the reaction proceeds in step 4 the indicator changes color now table 2.1 shows the colors of three different indicators at ph 1 and ph 14 and the ph range over which the indicators change color so here is the color the ph 1 color at the ph 14 and the ph range in which it changes the color the indicator changes color now if we check what is step 4 we can see that in step 4 the reaction mixture is heated and it's up to 30 uh, minutes but here it's e uh, written that we add koh that is potassium hydroxide is added to this mixture then uh, the indicator is added and then the boiling with reflux occurs and it shows that it changes the color during this reaction now use the table to identify a suitable indicator and explain your answer now we know that koh potassium hydroxide is a base and it's a strong base but we can see that in these two indicators it shows a 
color change in the acidic pH range which we cannot use because we have used a base. So we need an indicator which will show a color change in the basic range especially the weak basic side. So thymolphthalene, thymolphthalene is the indicator which we can uh, use uh, for our process and because we can say that the KOH that is potassium hydroxide used changes color changes color in this range in this range of pH range of pH as it is a base yeah this is how we'll explain yes in step 6, a small sample of the reaction mixture is analyzed along with the samples of ester X and ethanoic acid. And we can see that here ester X and ethanoic acid is given and it shows a particular spot, single spot is shown in the chromatogram. Now state what feature of the chromatogram shows that the hydrolysis is incomplete. Remember, hydrolysis is incomplete. That is the ester is not fully broken down into acid and alcohol it is not fully that shows that if it is not fully uh, hydrolyzed into acid and alcohol some of it mixture the reaction mixture should contain ester also and yes we can see here that the ester which is here with the uh, RF value uh, we have got also one spot at the same RF value or the same distance we can say so that shows that the reaction mixture still contains ester so we can say that the reaction mixture the reaction mixture produces a spot on chromatogram with the same distance also you can write or you can write the same RF value also value as ester X right so this is how we can make out whether the ester is present or not and yes the sub question D suggest an experimental process that could be used to extract an alcohol ROH from the reaction mixture. Now we know that the reaction mixture contains alcohol, contains acid and also contains the ester. So if there is a mixture of three liquids or you can say it's in the aqueous form and if you want to separate the alcohol, the best separating technique is the fractional uh, distillation. Fractional distillation is uh, used where we have mixture of various liquids or uh, gases also. So fractional distillation can be used to separate the alcohol. Now sub question E is figure 2.3 shows an infrared spectrum of ROH extracted in D. So here is that infrared spectrum given. Yes. And uh, the question follows is use table 2.2 to explain how the infrared spectrum in figure 2.3 shows that the ROH that is the alcohol extracted does not contain any ester X. Now if there is an ester we need to have a C double bond O and O and and C also. So there should be an C O bond there should be a C double bond O also present in the uh, mixture or in the uh, spectra which we obtain if uh, we its ester is still present along with the alcohol. So if we have a look here the R double bond O ester linkage it should show a peak in the range of 1700 to 1750 uh, per centimeter so let's see whether we have got a peak or not yes we haven't got any peak here in this range it's a straight so we can show that the C double bond O is uh, not present so we can write that the spectrum does not have an absorption in the range of 
1710 to 1750 per centimeter if it's present then the c double bond o is present that shows the ester is present if only alcohol is there then the c single bond o will be present because the alcohol is having a c single bond o so that would be present but then c double bond o uh, absorption should not be present if the uh, ester is not present yes so that is proved already if through the spectra yes in sub question f it shows the proton nmr spectrum of the roh and here we can see there are three peaks obtained in the nmr spectra now in this table 2.3 shows some relevant uh, nmr information proton nmr information and the table is given here here now it says uh, chemical shift per ppm is 1.2 and the other we can make out yes let's see what are the other peaks we obtain here yes we have one more peak other than uh, 1.2 we have approximately that as 2.1 or 2.2 because here we have 2.5 so if we divide that into five more parts yes this can be 2.2 and here there is a one more peak at around four yes exactly four we can make out yes so 2.2 and 4.0 are the two we can say so 2.2 and 4.0 are the two chemical shifts where we are obtaining the peaks and 1.2 is a doublet 2.2 i think is a singlet yes check yes it's a singlet and then multiplet yes so let's write singlet and here they have uh, shown here the relative peak area is six times one and one and the structure responsible for the peak is ch3 now 2.2 is a singlet that shows the adjoining carbon does not have any a proton now 2.2 let's see what is 2.2 responsible for peak yes 2.2 is here there is no other range where 2.2 is shown so here it has C double bond O present. Now we know that it's an alcohol. Alcohol should not have C double bond O. So let's check where is it possible. Yes, here there is one more range in which 2.2 can be present. Now that is for the alcohol. Yes, so that is definitely present in our uh, compound. So yes, this peak is because of the ROH. So we can write the OH group is responsible for this peak. And remember, the proton of the alcohol is always going to produce the singlet. Now, 4.0 is a multiplet. Let's check what is 4.0. 4 4.0 let's yes here 4.0 is present here 4.0 in this range that shows that there should be an electronegative uh, oxygen atom present along with the proton now chlorine is not present in our compound so we ignore that so either ch2 or ch3 bonded to o should be present yes so we can write that a ch bond bonded to the oxygen so this is what it is responsible for and yes it is a multiplet because that shows that the adjoining carbon should have more than three uh, proton present on it so name of the roh now we know to find out now let's understand the whole spectra and the method here now it says here the relative peak area is one now if one is present here that shows that the proton responsible also is one now here also it's one that shows that the proton present should also be one that is only one hydrogen present with the one here which is bonded directly to oxygen so if we draw a structure where an oh is present then uh, yes we should have two ch3 groups because the relative peak area is six so that shows that there are three sorry six hydrogen six protons responsible for this peak now that is possible only when we bond 
टू सी एच थ्री दैट इज टू मिथाइल ग्रुप टू दिस कार्बन एंड दैट्स वाई दिस प्रोटोन प्रोड्यूज इज अ मल्टीप्लेट बिकॉज देर आर सिक्स प्रोटोन बॉन्डेड टू इट सो ही आर वी हैव मल्टीप्लेट दिस सी एच विथ ओ ये सी एच विथ ओ प्रोड्यूज इज मल्टीप्लेट now this proton ch3 here which is given you can see there is a doublet that shows that the adjoining carbon should have just one single proton that's why these two protons are two uh, types of protons are producing the doublet so here we have got the structure so draw the display formula of the ester now first let's make out the name which we are supposed to write here now we can see that there is a longest carbon chain of three carbon that is propane and on the second carbon that is counting from here second if we count from here then also second so the second carbon have the alcohol group so if we name it then we can name as propane 2 all propane 2 all should be the name and if we draw the display formula now display formula should have all the bonds showing so let us draw the structure again showing all the bonds so yes starting with the three carbon first yes here we draw the carbon one proton at the center three more hydrogen or proton on the both sides yes that is drawn now the three hydrogen and then the alcohol group on the second carbon so this is how we draw the display formula if orientation is changed that doesn't make any difference now the last is a twinish question is the ester x will undergo hydrolysis with water in the presence of sulfuric acid under reflux using a similar procedure now suggest why none of the indicators in table 2.1 would change color in this experiment now let's check what is table 2.1 uh, 2.1 here 2.1 here yes this is the table 2.1 now sulfuric acid you can say that it's a very strong acid which changes its a color or it has a ph range from 1 to Three only, or you can say it might have a pH of one or two only. Now we can say that the methyl orange and bromocresol have a pH range from three to four point five and four to five point five, which is a weak acidic range. But sulfuric acid is quite a strong acid; does not show any pH in this range, and so it will not show any. Color change. So that's how we are going to explain it in our explanation that. the sulfuric acid that is h2so4 is a strong acid is a strong acid and the ph remains below 3 and so it should not show any color change after 3 ph that is a ph greater than 3 so here our last question also ends and i hope the whole explanation is very clear